Hello, and welcome to another edition of Meeting with the Manager. I'm City Manager Eric Tungate. On this month's show, I have the privilege of welcoming in our newest restaurant owner, Kurt Catalo of Union Joints. Many of you already know he will be redeveloping the WWJ building on 8 Mile Road. And I will also be welcoming in Director Kim Maroney, our Director of Economic Development and Communications. Before I welcome Kurt in, I'd like to discuss a few things that are going on in our city. First, many of you know that we are working on a full redesign of Nine Mile Road. For those of you that are interested, we will have community sessions where you can participate in the makeup and the design of the project. In addition to that, as many of you already know, we have a very large development going on in the southwest corner of our city, the FedEx ground facility, which is a 300,000 square foot distribution facility. That project is about 80% complete. We also have many different infrastructure projects, some of which we are accounted for and some of which we are just partners to. The largest of those projects is the complete redo of the plaza decks over 696. Many of you have already seen the trees have been removed and some of the playground structures have been removed and construction has begun. This is a very important project to our city as it will impact many of our community residents in the general area. At this point in time, I'd like to now welcome in Kurt Catalo to my show. Hi, Kurt. Thank you welcome for in. having me, Eric. Honored to be here. Thank you very much, and welcome to Oak Park. Thank you. So I'd like to start with a brief overview of how you first thought about this property and how it came to be. You know, I think that this property is so unique because it's, uh, it's one of those buildings that you mentioned to anybody and they know the WWJ Tower. It's such an iconic structure on such an iconic road that everybody already knows it. And uh, it's always been on our radar as a building. It had just never been on our radar as an opportunity to repurpose it and uh, really save it as a restaurant. So that was kind of uh, a big step for us. But as far as the building, I mean, I have known that my whole life, and for good reason. Absolutely. And I think it goes without saying, and, and you're widely known in metropolitan Detroit as well as the state of Michigan and probably beyond that now, um, you choose buildings with historic value like this. What other projects do you have going on or restaurants you have in other cities? Well, you know, I think uh, I speak to uh, these buildings on behalf of Union Joints and Ann Stevenson, my wife, because really these buildings have kind of found us. In 1995, we opened uh, our first restaurant, the Clarkson Union, in a former Baptist church on Main Street in Clarkston. And since then, we've kind of been fortunate enough to find these buildings that had always served one purpose, but were destined to serve another. Um, Vincetta Garage is a great example in Berkeley. It had always been a uh, service station, and Casey Crane, our partner there, bought it to make sure that that piece of automotive history was going to be preserved. And we uh, talked to them and said, we want to repurpose it as a restaurant. Uh, the same with the Fenton Fire Hall. In Fenton, the uh, DDA knew that they wanted to save this iconic structure. It had been their fire station since 1929. And again, we competed for that. We're fortunate enough to uh, be awarded that building and the pump house and a grant to just bring it back to life as a restaurant. One of the things that I'm proud of that we do is we don't change these buildings. We go in and we repurpose them. I mean, in the case of Fenton, we put an addition on to house things that you didn't need for a little fire station like bathrooms for 200 people. But we really go in with a low impact approach because for us, the buildings are, are more important than what we're doing in them. And Oak Park is just such an example of a building that we have to handle with extreme care because it's Albert Kahn and it's only original once, and you're not going to find a building more special than this. Absolutely. And it goes, you know, it, it's on 8 Mile Road. And, you know, you and I have talked in the past about um, some of the implications of that. We know the historic value of the building itself, but the sort of symbolic value with the fact that it's on 8 Mile Road, how do you see this transforming 8 Mile and maybe some of the negative images people have of 8 Mile even? You know, I think that uh, 8 Mile is uh, transforming itself because it is, it's such a vibrant uh, thoroughfare, and there's no way around that. And if you just look at uh, the traffic and how much is going on, and if you start at the State Fair site and kind of work your way west, you see that there is this revitalization that's happening very organically. And in the case of the WWJ building, 
I mean, if this were on uh, on nine mile or seven mile, we would still love it. On eight mile, it just makes a different sense because there's so much traffic. And as a business, you have to respect that traffic because it's such a rare opportunity. Absolutely. And so, you know, I mean, I look at eight mile and your project as we've discussed that, you know, the symbolism for me is that it also can connect the city and the suburbs. Um, it's such an important um, aspect to, the, to what you do, and you've done this, as you mentioned, you've done this in a variety of different communities. All these projects, and the Brewster Wheeler project, mm -hmm. for example, in Brush Park in Detroit, all of these projects. So what's your favorite project, and why is it your favorite project? Uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, the answer would be the next one. Because we just, uh, for us, once these buildings are up and viable and preserved, we sleep easier. We sleep easier knowing that the Union Church is restored and we don't have to worry about water coming through the ceiling. The Fenton Fire Hall, we don't have to worry about tuck pointing this building or the bell tower falling down. Once they're established and viable businesses and our team, who are the best, are running them, then we sleep easy, you know, as easy as you can sleep when you're in a restaurant business. But we sleep easy with the structures. And I think the case of WWJ and Brewster Wheeler, for us, the first thing is to stabilize these buildings and just to make sure that they're preserved and that the mortar is replaced. And then at the end of the day, they give a restaurant group something that you, can, you can't build. You can't find that kind of solar character in drywall in a strip mall. And we know that we take care of these buildings and then when we're done, they start taking care of us, which is a, it's a great relationship and we're lucky. Absolutely. You know, a lot of people in the city of Oak Park and even really outside of the city of Oak Park don't realize that we were a dry community less than a year ago. Yep. Dry community in the sense that we did not allow restaurants like the one you're building to acquire a liquor license. And I think it's important for people to realize that one of the reasons that you're able to do this project is because our voters turned out in May of 2015 and supported a Class C liquor license initiative. And I think, I think when you asked about uh, when we first started thinking about the WWJ building as a viable restaurant, well, you couldn't have thought of it as uh, a business like that two years ago because this was dry. And, you know, I think that it speaks volumes for the vision that you had as to how to move Oak Park carefully into the future. And then just in those early conversations that we had with uh, Kim Maroney, we knew that there was this momentum in Oak Park yeah. that was a careful trajectory. For me, it means the world that the citizens of Oak Park voted on the referendum to allow liquor, that it was something that they recognized as a necessity if they wanted to attract restaurant business in this community. And we're big proponents of the strength of restaurants and placemaking and job creation. You look at a little place like Vincetta Garage, which is a small restaurant mm -hmm. on Woodward uh, with adequate parking. And really, that business has paid uh, over $6 million to the people who have worked there wow. since we've opened. We haven't been open long. And that's money in the community. And I think over 30% of the people work within the zip code which is great. We have a lot of other people just working from the surrounds that come to Vincetta Garage. And you know, it's 100 jobs that are created. And I think when they passed the liquor license uh, referendum, I don't know how it was positioned here, but it really allowed a business like a restaurant to come in and in due course try to make a difference and help grow. Well, I have to say, as, as one of the um, say founders of all of it, but one of the uh, drivers of it, that when we discussed it, and remember the, the beginning step was a city council resolution that supported tavern licenses, which is the beer and wine only, in restaurants only, and then went farther in terms of the ballot initiative for Class C liquor licenses. When we were visioning all of this, and the previous city council even, it was your kind of restaurant that we had in mind. And the fact that um, you're one of the first to uh, you know, get a hold of one of these Class C licenses and now locate in the city and become a, you know, big destination unto yourself. To me, that is exactly what we intend to duplicate as much as possible throughout the rest of the city. Yeah. And, and to be honest, and we've talked about this a little bit, but we're going to use um, your example because it's such a prime example, not just here, anywhere. You know, it's happening in Detroit, Clarkston, Fenton, you mentioned. Um, we're going to use this example in terms of how we can partner with businesses like yours 
in our, in this case it happens to be a uh, historic building that my goodness needed to be repurposed anyway but we're going to use this example um, throughout the rest of the city and I guess that's my next question is when we're using this example throughout the rest of the city what kinds of businesses do you see following suit because again you're a destination unto yourself do you see other restaurants like that locating in Oak Park or what do you vision for Oak Park I think if you look at uh, what's happening in uh, really the Tri-County area, what's really happening in Oakland County and the restaurant scene in Detroit is something very special right now. And it's that independent businesses, independent restaurants, independent bakeries, these smaller joints are making a difference and they're creating a culture. And it's this kind of entrepreneurial spirit that there's something very Detroit about that. When I say Detroit, I mean the region because there's that that resilience and that craftsmanship and things that you find at restaurants now. And I think if you just look at what's happening on Nine Mile, on Eight Mile, I, I really believe that it's just that there's a little momentum going and the momentum is, uh, is like a thousand little hands with a few right. big hands behind it. There are definitely some horse right. But I think it's those little hands that are making a difference. And you know, we look at, at why Union Joints has grown over 20 years, and it's because our dishers become cooks, and our cooks want to become chefs, and our chefs want to run restaurants. And so the only reason we grow is because if we don't, we're going to lose these guys. And so if you look at our chefs, you realize that they're, that they're with us still because we were able to give them opportunities. And Oak Park's no different. And if you look at, um, you know, all these chefs, this culture is starting to create uh, more opportunities in the restaurant business. And I think that uh, it's these little sparks that kind of light up little neighborhoods and, and grow. And so hopefully, it, you know, if one of our dishers becomes a chef, becomes a, a restaurant owner, that's great. If they're still with us, it's even better. Yeah, and it's, it's always amazing to me, and I've learned so much from you in the time that we've spent working on the beginning of this project. It's always amazing to me, though, how much of a craft being a restaurant owner and a chef and a, you know whatever it may be within the context of a restaurant, how much of a craft that is. And I know you were just recently in Mexico City and you were doing some taste testing and some other yep. things. Yeah, we're opening a joint in Clarkston in a former uh, gas station and the former DPW building, which was an originally a, a car dealership. So we're opening that right now as a place called Hancho, which is between the Union and the Woodshop, our other two restaurants there really just because we want to start um, creating some Latin street food. We just, we love it. So we took the, uh, the kids and our uh, chef, Aaron Kozad, and our managing partner, Eric Lines, down to Mexico City and just uh, had at it. I mean, we just ate at every uh, suspicious looking uh, street vendor in the world and just had the best food. And I think it's that kind of food that people are are out to find right Sounds now. like an We're ideal good. job right there. I, I would be good at that job, I think. There, there, there was some risk involved. <laughs> and we had a great food guide and had just fantastic meals. And then Chef and I got a little cocky and thought that we could pick out the right vendors. And uh, that was a little more ambitious. We weren't ready for that. But I think the food that we brought back, the inspiration is what is what people are looking for. And you know, when we opened 20 years ago, there weren't cable channels dedicated to food. Right. There weren't, you know, so many cookbooks and so much passion about food and culture. And now, I mean, it's, it's fun and people just love it. And I think that Detroit, uh, that this scene is helping fuel that. But in a way, it's a bigger story because it's happening throughout the U.S. And, uh, and Oakland County and Wayne County are playing parts in it. It's just, it's great to open food and wine and see stories about this region. Absolutely. Because you couldn't do that. 10 years ago. Yeah, it's, it's, it's reminiscent of the, the transition, I th in my opinion at least, that happened in Brooklyn. I mean, it's very yeah. similar to that, that uh, culinary scene that exploded in the 90s and yep. to some degree is today. And I think it was kind of the same formula if you look at what made Brooklyn work and what's making this area work is that people realize that at the time in Brooklyn you could get a storefront a lot cheaper than Manhattan. You could start a yeah. business easier than you could in Manhattan. And I think that that's the spirit that's uh, leading to all these businesses opening, whether you're opening a place that uh, washes dogs or a, a donut shop, it doesn't matter. It's just right. jumping in there and repurposing a space and bringing something back to life. Yeah, and it's amazing to me, um, one of the examples, of course your restaurants are examples as well, but one of the other examples that I've always thought was the Slow's Barbecue example in Corktown, in the Corktown neighborhood of the city of Detroit. And you don't often think that a restaurant can 
uh, redo an entire neighborhood or be the catalyst for redoing an entire neighborhood. And you've done that as well, and it, as you mentioned, and it's just amazing to me that that can happen, and I definitely see that happening down here. Yeah, I think like Slow's is a, a good example because you, you know, uh, back in the day driving down Michigan, you'd never stop and say, this is a perfect location for a restaurant. You know, because if you look at whatever algorithm these chains use to pick their locations, right. I mean, I don't know what box it would have checked because they'd right. be looking for things that aren't interesting. They'd be looking for proximity to a hotel or, you know, uh, how easy it is to get to from an airport or whatever these chains look for. But yeah. I think Slows did it because they just, they knew that they could create a destination there and believed in their ability to do so. And uh, if there's one thing that we have, it's we know that we find these buildings that are so special that that's all we need to know is that this building's gonna give you something you can't find on every other exit on I-75. And at the end of the day, uh, for us, we have a little confidence because we don't really care where that building is. If it was three blocks off of Eight Mile, hidden in the uh, uh, neighborhoods of Oak Park, we would have still wanted it because yeah. we knew that the building is so special. It, it helps that this one happens to have like a 1500 foot tall right. fork that tells right. you where it is. So, you know, as long as that fork was there three blocks in, we'd be okay. I have two more questions for you. One is, um, you know, there's been a lot of questions about what type of fare you're gonna serve at this restaurant. Delicious. I, delicious fare, of course. But give some examples. I know you talked about the mac and cheese uh, fare, but what other things are you thinking at this point? You know, I think the, when we develop um, menus for these buildings, Ann Stevenson, my wife, Ann does all the design and really works closely with Chef Kozad on designing the menus. And I think what we create is something that pays respect to the space. It's like the kind of menu that makes sense in the space, but also makes sense with what we do. And we are, we are not a tablecloth kind of joint. It's just not our thing. Right. We like food that uh, under promises and over delivers and you just know what you're getting. We're not hiding it behind sauces. We're just keeping it honest. And we're fortunate that that kind of comfort food that we've had uh, has kind of come to us. I mean, it's, we're fortunate that, that that's kind of where, it's the kind of food that people want now, which is good. And I think if you look at the menu that we have at the Fenton Fire Hall or Vincetta Garage or the Union Wood Shop or the Union, these are all similar but different. And they're different because they pay respect to the building that they're in. So the fire hall, I mean, we cook with fire. It makes sense there. But, right. you know, we have a bunch of chili because you can't have a fire hall without chilies. Right. And I think that uh, Oak Park, that this building, I mean, it's special. It has a certain uh, stature to it. And I think that the menu needs to be broad shouldered. The menu needs to be our kind of food, but also pay respect to the structure. And that's really, that's something that'll, that'll come, but it, it definitely, we're not gonna venture out of our comfort zone and our comfort zone is rooted in comfort food. Okay, so last question along those same lines then. Um, it seems like every time I am watching Food Network or one of these other shows, I see you on here. I'm, you, you, yeah, I hope I look better in person. <laughs> you look wonderful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so, so random question, but what is your favorite episode or appearance or segment on any one of these shows? Um, you know, that's a great question. Um, it's difficult to say because, you know, we just, we love any time that the buildings are featured and our chef is featured and the food is featured. And so it's always a little bit different. And there have been some uh, shows like You Gotta Eat Here that we did that were just a lot of fun to film. And we just really loved doing it. But if you look at the, um, the net that was cast, I mean, diners, drive-ins, and dives, and the fact that Kid Rock did the episode with us. I mean, that really, that changed our business in Clarkson. I mean, that that happened and it, it changed us enough where we could start giving health care to everybody. I mean, that changed us enough that, wow. that we could uh, look at opening other restaurants because it was just, it made such a big difference to the wood shop uh, and the union that that was just neat. And, you know, I'd get um, calls from people who saw it out in California and you, you know, get Facebook imagine. friends wow. coming out. It's just, it's neat to know that this little building that has served a million orders of mac and cheese in Clarkston uh, can get enough attention to be noticed on a bigger stage. And it proves that you can do that if you're just, if you're a little voice, but you just stay true to it. So we're, we're proud of what that 
repurposing is done because it's 21 years later, it's a million max, and we have people that have been with us all 20 years, and as we grow, um, it's our obligation to find opportunities for them, and Oak Park and your building and the vision that you have for Oak Park moving forward and uh, Kim Maroney's commitment to uh, moving it forward economically, we knew that this was just a no-brainer for us. For us, there wasn't a single box that this didn't check because it's it's a building you can't replicate. It's Albert Kahn, which is the pinnacle. Yeah. You know, it has history that can't be touched. And it has it had always served one purpose and it never served another. And for us, those are the boxes we're looking to check, and it happens to be on eight mile, which is even more amazing. So because it's on eight mile, will we see somebody like Eminem at the opening, do you think? Uh, I I would uh, I would doubt that because he'd be under his hoodie anyway. <laughs> But I think it's just uh, 8 Mile is so iconic, and what Eminem and the movie have done for 8 Mile, I mean, it's just, we understand that there's like an importance and a reverence to that stretch, and it's just so cool that this building with this kind of footprint uh, lives on it, just looking out over 8 Mile, and uh, we want to cast a big net. We want to be able to reach as far as the original signal did. That's great. That's a good line. I might use I, that yeah, line there you go. The key. So I think it's just... Um, it's just exciting, and you know, I'm I'm sitting here and uh, knowing that my mom went to high school across the street, and I don't, I just think that she would have never imagined a that that building would be a restaurant, right, right, and then uh, b that you could get a beer in Oak or Park. that her son would be doing the restaurant. The <laughs> so I think that uh, it's just it's really neat, and it's kind of come full circle with uh, with us to be able to do something like this, and for that building to be saved and repurposed and hopefully give something new to the community. Definitely. Well, I want to thank you in so many ways, but especially thank you for joining me on my show this month. Excellent. Thank you for being here. I appreciate thank it. Thank you for having us. Thank appreciate you. Appreciate it. As you can see, it's an exciting time to be in our city. I now have the pleasure of welcoming in our Director of Economic Development and Communications, Director Kim Maroney. Welcome. Thank Hello, you. Eric. Good to see you. You too. So since you've been here, I have to say, um, one of the best moves that I've ever made was hiring you. And um, you have really commandeered many great projects in this city. So what's the buzz all about? As you're out here talking to developers and real estate people, what are they saying to you about our city? Developers and residents are really excited about Oak Park right now. People are looking to invest in Oak Park. Um, it's not as hard to get people to sit down and talk to you anymore. They're, they're calling me now to set up appointments. So it's a very exciting time. People still want to get in while the prices are still um, at a low and make their investment now so that they can capitalize on the rising prices we have here in Oak Park right now. I would agree. And so one of the things that I get asked all the time and I talked to Kirk Catalo about as well was the classy liquor licenses. When I was talking about this in the town halls and other places, it was that this is another arrow in our quiver. Are you finding that to be true out there? Yeah, it's a really exciting time and an opportunity for us to kind of bring Oak Park to the next level. Having the classy liquor licenses allowed us to bring somebody like a Union Joints restaurant with Kurt Catalo and his team here. Without those, it would have never been possible and it's opened up the eyes to a lot of other possibilities. Typically restaurants like that will then bring in um, spin-off businesses, you know, other right. retail businesses that want to invest here in Oak Park. So it, it's a good time to be here in Oak Park. Yeah. So one of the things that I think is important for our residents and business owners to know is know a little bit about you personally. And so you live on the northeast side of the metro area, right? Yep. And Tell us about your career. How did you get involved in economic development? Where did this all start? Well, after taking several years off to raise my two daughters at home, I got into um, being a director at a chamber of commerce, um, one nearby my home. And from there, it spun off into being offered the job as executive director for a downtown development authority. So worked that avenue for a while, learned a lot about city government, which is totally different than uh, the private side that I had typically worked on and uh, loved what I was doing in economic development and was ready to move on to a new challenge. I did what I could in the small town I worked in and, and Oak Park had everything I was looking for. The opportunity, um, it, it was on its way up. And it's, I would totally concur. It's, it's an amazing that just, you know, 
three years, short years ago, we created the economic development function and to now see us you know, hitting our stride here. And there's a lot to be made about this idea of momentum in the world of economic development. Where are we in the momentum? Well, we are just starting the momentum. Yeah. Uh, when I came here, when I told people where I was going to work, nobody even heard of Oak Park. Uh, I say Oak Park now and people know what I'm talking about. So we are just getting the word out that we exist. So we are just getting on that up uptick and it, it, it's going to keep going in that direction. Uh. So some of the momentum is around, you know, just the projects themselves. And one of the things that I'm always surprised by when residents either come into my office or call me or email me or whatever it may be, is that they don't realize how many things are happening. So give us an overview of just some of the I would call some of these major projects around the city. Yeah, so <clears throat> economic development isn't just about calling businesses and trying to attract them or helping the business grow. It's about creating the atmosphere that people are looking for, that they want to invest in. So some of the projects you may have seen over the last year and a half or so since I know that I've been here, I can't speak to before then, but we put up the new city welcome signs. Those brought a huge sense of pride to our residents and our business owners here in Oak Park. Some of the landscaping, the flower pots we did last year, we're hoping to beef that up with the sunflower project we're gonna announce and some pop-up recreation. We created a corridor improvement authority to yeah. allow us to get the dollars we need to invest in our corridors like Coolidge and Nine Mile and 11 Mile and make those into areas that people wanna uh, walk about and they wanna ride their bikes in. And <clears throat> we're working on redesigning Nine Mile Road right now. Uh, we'll have a lot of public forums for that. But the redesigning of Nine Mile will create that atmosphere. I'm sure you heard the buzzword placemaking. Right. Um, it makes people want to go and visit and spend time there. It's hard to describe. You, you just feel it when you're in one of those places. And we want to bring those elements into Oak Park because they don't exist today. Right. And, and we want to attract the people who will then attract the businesses to come. So you've got to create the place to make the environment for more investment. Absolutely. And I say this all the time until I'm People are sick of hearing it, but we are not a city trying to overcome, you know, cities nearby. We're, we're, we are a bedroom community mm -hmm. in the inner ring suburbs, but we haven't played our role uh, within some of those best uh, places to live and, and, you know, go out to eat and so forth. So all that, where, what types of projects do you see going on in the future now? And I know 2016 is a big year and going to be in a bigger year. What kinds of things are you seeing in your pipeline? Yeah, well, we have the new uh, residential development coming up, the Jefferson Oaks project. Uh, I see some other restaurants maybe coming into our future and maybe a few new retail establishments. Um, I, I think we're just going to kind of build on that momentum right now. Industrial area is almost completely built out in Oak Park. We still have some vacant land on the Armory parcels, but we have some great prime real estate also on the Armory site for some great retail opportunities. So we're working hard. To Are we sell. looking at big box type retail possibly, there? Or? Okay. Possibly some big box, some restaurants uh, with the classy liquor licenses make all of those possibilities available to us right now. So sure. we are um, definitely focusing part of our efforts on the 8-mile corridor because we think that that is an important area for our city. It, it is the borderline between Detroit and Oak Park, and it, it kind of welcomes everybody into our city, so we want to sure. make sure that it's looking its best. And so I, I have to ask this, but I get asked this question a lot too. What kind of, a, and I want to say just a negative impact, does the Northland Mall uh, area of Southfield have on us? I think the uncertainty of what's going to happen at Northland right now has um, a negative impact on us. Uh, not knowing what will eventually be across the street is, is an unknown. So a uh, business looking to locate there would prefer, of course, to know what's going across the street. Um, if it's something that's going to complement their business or if it's something that's going to hurt it. So the unknown is, is the biggest downfall right now with sure. Northland. Sure. Well. I can't thank you enough for all of your hard work and helping us improve this city. Um, it's been a tremendous ride, of course. Um, and I also want to thank you for joining me on my show this month. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Bye. I want to thank you for joining me on this month's edition of Meeting with the Manager. Look for an exciting show next month. Thank you for all of your support and have a good day.